Hello people, in this video, let us look at malignant melanoma of choroid, okay? So, it's a malignancy, it's cancer, right? It's of the choroid. You know the choroid where it is? So, here you have the retina, then outside you have the sclera, in the middle, that orange, whatever they are showing you, that is the choroid, okay? So, they have marked here. You can see. Retina, sclera is outside, middle, those two, you have this choroid, okay? So, this one. So, that is what? Malignant melanoma. So, melanoma means what? It's affecting the melanocytes, isn't it? So, this one is where they are sh uh, showing you the fundus picture showing choroidal melanoma as raised pigmented subretinal mass. So, because you are looking at the retina, below it only choroid is there. So, it is a subretinal mass, pigmented subretinal mass. What is it? It is nothing but choroidal melanoma. Okay. So, this uh, another photo is there here. This is showing the ex um, extensive malignant melanoma of the choroid which is now involving the orbit okay see it is a unilateral condition by looking at this person you can guess probably around 50 years right so basically in tumors of uveal tract uveal tract means what and all can get affected guys the choroid the ciliary body the iris right so basically here tumors of the choroid in that the malignant one you have the melanoma Okay, so tumors of choroid can have melanoma, ciliary body can have melanoma, iris can have melanoma. This melanoma is a very generic word, it can be there in many places. Okay, see melanoma, it can also be there in conjunctiva, it, there it is called as primary melanoma. Guys, focus in conjunctiva, it says primary melanoma, eyelid, retina, orbital tumor also can be melanoma. Very good, so now let's look at... Um, Malignant melanoma, why is it important? It's the most common primary intraocular tumor, okay, of adults. We told you around 50 years of age, you can remember. It's mostly in whites and uh, it is the arising from where? From the pigment cells of uvea. It's solitary tumor, it's unilateral, okay. Unilateral, you saw the photo. Gross pathology, what will you see in this? You will see it can be either pedunculated or flat, something like this, you can remember. We are not going into the details. It can be pedunculated or flat in the um this is the gross okay now coming to histopathology what will you see basically there are spindle cells can be there or there can be epithelioid cell melanoma spindle shell cell has um, best prognosis epithelioid cells have worse prognosis then you have mixed necrotic etc spindle remember this uh, snow white sorry sleeping beauty sleeping beauty spindle isn't it so we just put one spindle here spindle cell melanoma has best prognosis did you understand guys which has bad epithelioid very good okay then what is this uh, this is the uh, stages of uh, malignant mel melanoma you have the quiescent uh, phase uh, stage so in the quiescent uh, stage what will you see guys very easily you will say you will see a small tumor you will see a small tumor usually in the periphery so what will happen if it's in the periphery it will not affect much right so there's a small tumor so, this is amelanotic. Look at this orange patches in the pigment epithelium due to the accumulation of lipofusin. Orange patches. Quiescent stage over, then large tumor it became. Now, what will happen? Because of this, there will be exudative retinal detachment. Remember here. Okay. Look at this photo. There is retinal detachment because of that mass. Okay. Malignant melanoma of the choroid causing exudative retinal detachment. Which type of retinal detachment, guys? exudative retinal detachment all because of the large tumor very good then what else is going to happen a lot of other things are happening we'll come to it glaucoma at the stage now glaucoma may develop because of uh, obstruction of the venous outflow because of the pressure on the vortex veins so the vortex veins word is important because of the uh, outflow is blocked now there could be glaucoma okay intraocular pressure is raised so remember intraocular pressure is raised guys uh, do you understand Intraocular pressure raised, glaucoma. Okay, then extraocular extension. Now it has come extraocular also. See, this is extraocular or what? This is uh, what are they showing here? It bursts through the sclera, even uh, uh, it bursts through the sclera where at the limbus and extraocular spread may occur. Guys, look at this. They are showing the vortex veins here. See, vortex vein, they have shown one here and one here. Okay, so. The tumor will burst through the sclera, usually at the limbus. That's what they said, right? Here it will burst. Okay. Then, what else, guys? Uh, look at this. There will be proptosis here. You can see the proptosis, isn't it? Very good. Then, distant metastasis, where will it go? Happily, it will go to the liver. Liver is so sad, guys. It's the commonest cause of death. Liver, it will go. Okay. 
so guys look at this it can lead to cataract it can lead to glaucoma it can lead to vitreous hemorrhage it can lead to retinal detachment which type exudative or solid retinal detachment why they are saying serious here okay what are the differential diagnosis differentiated from nevus choroidal hemangioma also you should differentiate it from remember then uh, how will you investigate you do indirect ophthalmoscopic examination you will see the fundus you will do a scan b scan ultrasound the uh, you can see here the dome shaped mass you can see here this is b scan mri you will do you will see hyper intense t1 and hypo intense t2 it's written here then you can do a liver function test also isn't it to know how the liver is so here they are showing you a scan uh, that's graph here right and here they are showing you b scan and here they are showing you the retinal detachment then here they are showing you the uh, vascular vascularity in the color doppler then here they are showing you the t1 hyper intense and uh, t2 hypo intense then you have another type of gadolinium imaging then uh, indocyanin green you can do for uh, fundus angiography right then uh, all these are investigations now let's come to the treatment guys treatment what will you do for small tumors uh, they are saying basically observe and uh, they are talking about brachytherapy using iodine this term is a new right brachytherapy then you have radiotherapy then you have uh, thermotherapy diode laser laser they are using so they are using uh, laser say brachytherapy brachytherapy iodine iodine cobalt cobalt yeah and then they are using laser this is for photocoagulation they are doing okay then <clears throat> malignant melanoma of choroid what are we looking at treatment then you have some local resection you can do okay then you have stereotactic radio surgery oh this is radio surgery some gamma knife radio surgery then enucleation remember uh, absolute indications of enucleation are retinoblastoma and uh, large malignant melanoma of choroid they have given some dimension you can look at this excentration means you will remove the entire content of orbit right when it is at an extraocular spread that time you will have to do excentration then palliative therapy you have chemotherapy and immunotherapy for people with distant metastasis looks like so what are the indications of um, <clears throat> enucleation absolute indications are uh, retinoblastoma retinoblastoma and malignant melanoma absolute indications okay what is the prognosis it is poor if it is uh, in it has got invade if there is evidence of invasion there is poor prognosis that's it guys in this video what did we look at malignant melanoma of choroid say bye